Luftwaffe, your Wehrmacht, and your navy no longer exist. Your state doesn't exist anymore. Mr. Goering, you are a prisoner, and you are in jail! On the 20th of November, 1945, the world's first ever war crimes tribunal began. 21 of the most notorious Nazis went on trial for their lives. Of course we rearm. I rearm Germany until we bristle. Unrepentant and ruthless, the most fanatical was Hermann Goering, Hitler's chosen successor. You men knew the Führer, but I would rather die to defend us! have the Sovereign subjected to such humiliation. Whatever happens, the whole world will be watching. The trial was a huge gamble for the Allies. At stake, nothing less than history's verdict on Nazism. The barbarous treatment these people received is almost unbelievable. I'm ready to fight. If I cannot convince the court, then I shall at least convince the German people that all I did was done for the greater German Reich. It would have been much quicker just to follow Churchill's suggestion in the first place. Simply take the bastards outside and shoot them. Could Goering succeed where Hitler had failed and reignite Nazi pride from the courtroom? This witness has adopted, in the witness box and in the dock, an arrogant and contemptuous attitude toward this trial. If it please, Your Honor, kiss my ass. <laughs> <laughs> The day after Germany's surrender, Hermann Goering gave himself up to the US 36th Division. Remarkably, a press conference was called in his honor. Hey, Marshal, give us a smile. Please hurry, I'm hungry. Thanks. OK, first question. New York Times? You. When did you first believe that you had lost the war? Very soon after the Normandy landings. And the breakthrough of the Russians in the East. Please, please, New York Times. Me. You. Who was responsible for the concentration camps? Hitler never discussed the camps with people of my status. He only discussed them with the persons directly responsible for the camps. London here, Times. American Forces right Network. Here, yeah. Do you know you're on the list of war criminals? <laughs> no. That question surprises me very much. I can't imagine why I should be. Behind his fun-loving public image, Goering was a die-hard Nazi. Obsessively loyal to Hitler, together they destroyed German democracy. In power, Goering was brutal. He created the Gestapo, the feared secret police. He drafted laws against the Jews and drove German rearmament to a war footing. Goering was commander in chief of the Air Force and Hitler appointed him Reichsmarschall, Germany's top ranking soldier. What struck you when you first met him? was his bearing. Uh, he was a commanding personality. You were impressed. You knew that somebody important was there. Uh, he was not like some of the others, uh, very uh, hand-wringing and uh, whining and self-pitying. Uh, he was in charge. Held in solitary confinement, Goering awaited trial. But for the Allies, Giving him a public stage presented a huge risk that Goering might use it for Nazi propaganda. The prosecution urgently needed to know what he planned to do. I'm Captain Gilbert, your new liaison officer. 
Welcome. Please do sit down. Please. I see you've already received your indictment. Yes. There's only a small section on me. Apart from that, the charges against each of us criminals mean the same. I should like to record your reaction to the charges against you. Would you be willing to write something down for me? Yes, of course. Victor will always be the judge, the vanquished, the accused. As far as the trial is concerned, well, it's a cut and dried political affair. But I am prepared for the consequences. Which are? Oh, come on. I know I shall hang. You know I shall hang. I'm ready to fight. And if I cannot convince the court, then I shall convince the German people that all that I did was done for the greater German Reich. Captain Gustav Gilbert was a Jew of Austrian descent. A trained psychologist, he had spent the war as an intelligence officer, specializing in the interrogation of German prisoners. I had seen Nazi barbarism in places like Dachau concentration camp. I wanted to find out what made human beings do the things these men did. The Nazi leaders were now in Nuremberg jail, and that was the one place I wanted to be. The problem for the Allies was that not all of the Nazi leaders were in jail. In Lüneburg lies the body of the most hated man in Europe, Heinrich Himmler, chief of the Nazi secret police and the savage SS troops. Himmler was carrying tiny vials of poison. The suicide of Himmler, creator of the Nazi death camps, was a disaster for the Allies. With Hitler and Goebbels already dead, Goering was the most senior Nazi left. Let me show you something. Apart from an armed assault on a prison, this is what keeps me awake at night. We found it amongst Goering's jewelry. It's a cartridge, German caliber. Sure. But you can open it. Carefully. Potassium cyanide. There's enough there to kill a dozen men. Regular issue SS suicide ampule. Emily used one. Is Goering suicidal? Let me tell you about Goering. When he came to us, he was a simpering slob with two suitcases full of paracody, and I thought he was a drug salesman. He's addicted to drugs. Oh, sure. His habit traces way back when he was wounded in a Nazi fight. He took drugs for the pain. You think fat stuff is a big guy. You should have seen him before we put him on a diet. Our job, Captain, is to ensure these men are healthy enough to stand trial before the world. And I do not want them to become stirbugs. The guy could go nuts sitting in a little cell with what some of these boys have got on their minds. I want you to be our eyes and ears, Captain. Get to know the prisoners. Report back to me regularly on their mental states, especially Goering. If we lose him, 
we don't have a trial. Nothing must happen to Goering. Yes, sir. Before the trial, Robert Ley, creator of the Nazi leisure organization Strength Through Joy, committed suicide. I have been one of the responsible men. We have forsaken God, and therefore, we were forsaken by God. This must never Again. The word was put out, and uh, all sorts of measures were taken. Uh, whenever the prisoners were in their cells, they were constantly under observation, every minute of it. And they were not allowed to sleep with their hands under the covers. They must always have their hands on the top of the covers and they must sleep on their back, not on their side or on their stomach. <laughs> it's just as well he's dead. Because I had my doubts about how he would behave at the trial anyway. I'm sure he would have made a spectacle of himself. Do you think anybody really cares? The German people seem pretty disillusioned about the Nazi leadership. Never mind what the people say now. That's the one thing that doesn't bother me a little bit. Because I know what they said before. I know how they cheered and praised us when things were going well. And they will do it again. Lay. <laughs> I am determined, determined to go down in German history as a great man. In 50 or 60 years' time, there will be statues of Hermann Goering all over Germany. Little statues, perhaps, but one in every German home. <laughs> Aggressive, extroverted, egotistical. Gilbert was always in this rather difficult position, trying to win the confidence of these people, trying to, to counsel them. And he was also there feeding back ideas to the prosecution, even suggesting at times lines of attack. A ruthless adventurer and cynical realist in politics, basically lacking in scruple. should be asked whether he considered the lives of millions of Germans in preparing for war. So he was always in this rather ambiguous position, both trying to win the confidence of these people, but on the other hand, betraying those confidences to his paymasters. Leading the prosecution was American Supreme Court Judge, Justice Robert Jackson. With a team of lawyers from Britain, France, and the Soviet Union, Jackson aimed to destroy the Nazis and their ideas forever. What Jackson wanted was a record that would live through history of what the Nazis had done, and it would be so indisputable that people uh, would accept it. Uh, Secondarily, of course, he wanted to punish those who were guilty. 
David. Jackson's case was ambitious. It focused on proving that there had been a Nazi master plan. Thank you, Wilson. I've uh, redrafted the summary of evidence on the charge of conspiracy. The British prosecutors had pressed for a simpler approach. It uh, seems to have grown in length somewhat. As I've said, I want a complete legal case against the Nazi government. How they conspired to attack international peace and to exterminate minorities. Oh, I understand, of course. And yet, to prove that every Nazi act from 1933 was somehow part of some grand plan to wage war on Europe will be very difficult, if not impossible. Sir David, we have to tell the whole history of the Nazi movement, its treachery and its barbarism. It could take months. We don't want to lose public interest. Oh, sure, it would have been much quicker just to follow Churchill's suggestion in the first place. Simply take the bastards outside and shoot them, right? The Palace of Justice in Nuremberg, Germany, once the holy city of Nazism, becomes the setting of an epic event. Here, under the vigilant eyes of Allied military police, the 20 most important surviving members of the Hitler gang go on trial. On the 20th of November, 1945, the world's first international war crimes tribunal opened in Nuremberg. After three months in solitary confinement, all 21 of the defendants were to sit together in one large dock. This gave Goering a chance to influence his fellow prisoners and lead a united front in their defense. I think the prosecution should be congratulated on the division of the case. The English have been given the subject of colonization of territories by force. Who better qualify that? <laughs> <laughs> and I see the French have been given the subject of art looting. Well, since they've got all the art loot in the world, I suppose they are the experts. <laughs> Those in my team who have been watching the defendants closely say, no question, Gehring will attempt to disrupt the trial. One thing's for sure. Whatever happens, the whole world will be watching. <laughs> Goering tried to give the impression of a jovial realist who had played for big stakes and lost, and was taking it all like a good sport. His ready humor was always calculated to give the impression that such an amiable character could have meant no harm. Naturally, the Russians have been assigned crimes against humanity. <laughs> and as usual, the Americans stage the show and pay all the bills. <laughs> Goering faced charges on four counts. Directing wars of aggression, participating in war crimes, crimes against humanity, and conspiring with Hitler to carry them out. The trial, which is now about to begin, is unique in the history of the jurisprudence of the world. And it is of supreme importance to millions of people all over the globe. To sit there and watch not more than 20, 25 feet, there's Goering and Hess and Keitel 
and Kaltenbrunner and all the 21 defendants, the top leadership of what was left of the Nazis, led by Hermann Goering. And here I'm sitting, a satisfaction unlike anything that I could have imagined, to see justice being brought forth. Goering and the other defendants pleaded not guilty to all charges against them. It was time for Robert Jackson to open the case for the prosecution. May it please your honors. We will show these men to be living symbols of racial hatreds, of terrorism and violence, and of the arrogance and cruelty of power. These defendants waged aggressive war, a war in violation of treaties. German rearmament so outstripped the strength of her neighbors that in about a year, she was able to crush the whole military force of continental Europe. I could save the prosecution a lot of trouble. Of course we rearmed. I rearmed Germany until we bristled. I'm only sorry we didn't rearm more. And treaties, huh? Well, so much toilet paper, eh? <laughs> so you attacked peaceful countries that were no threat. Oh, come on. What about the grabbing of California? and Texas by the Americans. Hmm? That was aggressive warfare for territorial expansion. But when we Germans do it, hmm? suddenly it's a crime. Haven't you heard about how the Americans slaughtered the Indians? Oh, come on, you're not <laughs> comparing... No, look, 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 look. It's been going on for centuries. Back in the Stone Age, they just beat each other's brains out with clubs, and then the live ones oh. ate up the dead ones. <laughs> 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 I suppose I would have made a meal for two of them. <laughs> as soon as the trial started, Goering's domineering aggressiveness came to the fore. The challenge of acting out a new last act of the Nazi drama was as exhilarating as a shot in the arm. He immediately took charge of the prisoners. I think that Goering, almost till the end, believed that he was going to be recognized as the leader of the German government and would eventually be able to deal with the Allies on an even keel. He showed it, he never said it, but this is the impression that I had when, he, when I saw him in Nuremberg. But in court, the self-appointed leader of the Nazis now faced a growing mountain of evidence. If it please the tribunal, the prosecution for the United States will at this time present a documentary film on concentration camps. We intend to prove that each and every one of these defendants knew of the existence of these concentration camps. Instruments by which the defendants retained power and suppressed opposition of their policies. Dachau, factory of horror. Incoming prison trains arrived, carrying more dead than living. Others died after the liberation. They were buried by their fellow prisoners. This is what the liberators found inside the building. The barbarous treatment these people received in the German concentration camps is almost unbelievable. The Nazis maintained a building at the camp for medical experiments and vivisections with prisoners as guinea pigs. Few who entered the experimental buildings ever emerged alive. The body disposal plant, 
Inside are the ovens which gave the crematorium a maximum disposal capacity of about 400 bodies per 10-hour day. All bodies were finally reduced to bone ash. Inside Belton, the same story. Sanitary conditions were so appalling that heavy equipment had to be brought in to speed the work of cleaning up. This was Bergen Belton. I don't believe it. Be quiet. When this film was shown, it had a profound effect upon the defendants. Uh, there was utter quiet in the courtroom. There's no more talking among themselves. For the first time, the defendants be realized that uh, they were uh, involved, had been involved in an utterly criminal enterprise and that uh, they were going to have to answer for the consequences. It was such a good afternoon until they showed that film. It spoiled everything. The evidence is pretty damning, don't you think? I still can't grasp all those things. Do you suppose that if anybody came to see me and said, look, they're making freezing experiments with human guinea pigs, or that they were forcing people to dig graves and then shoot them by the thousands, that, well, I would have said, oh, come off it. That's fantastic nonsense. I mean, if a couple of zeros had been left off those figures, I, I might have thought it conceivable. But, God, that's the damnable thing. It doesn't seem possible. I shrugged it off as enemy propaganda. Don't you feel personally responsible in any way? Look, I will tell them that I was prepared to go to war to restore Germany's power. But I must defend myself on one point concerning my honor. I never ordered the carrying out of any of those atrocities. Hermann Goering, Trial Attitude and Defense. The self-styled Achilles has a vulnerable heel, the atrocities. They spoil the effect of his pose as a hero patriot and model officer. Should be asked why he did not investigate atrocity reports. This gives his enemies a chance to attack him with good reason. Spoils his pose. <laughs> but Jackson needed to prove that Goering was personally implicated in the Nazi atrocities. Gilbert kept watching him. I rather wish the Fuhrer had stood by his followers and taken the responsibility for his command. Think of his position. Oh, sure. His position as chief war criminal, right? He was our sovereign. It would be intolerable for me to have him standing before a foreign court. You men knew the Fuhrer. He would be the first one to stand up and say, I gave the orders and I shall take full responsibility. And I would rather die 10 deaths than have the sovereign subjected to such humiliation.
Goering had sworn an oath of loyalty to his Fuhrer. He famously declared, I have no conscience. Adolf Hitler is my conscience. This deep bond meant that any evidence against Hitler might also serve as ammunition against Goering. The prosecution now began to call to the witness stand other leading Nazis prepared to give first-hand accounts of their wartime activities. Will you now explain to the tribunal how these mass executions were carried out? A local Einsatz commando attempted to collect all the Jews in its area on the pretext that they were to be resettled. They were transported to the place of execution, as a rule, an anti-tank ditch. The executions were carried out in a military manner by firing squads. And did you have conversations with Himmler regarding this order? Yes. In the late summer of 1941, Himmler assembled the leaders and men of the Einsatz commandos. He pointed out that the leaders and men who were taking part in the liquidation bore no personal responsibility for the execution of this order. The responsibility was his alone and the Führer's. Did you hear him yourself saying that? Yes. I mean, what did the swine expect to gain by selling his soul to the enemy? Hmm? You'll hang anyway. Damn it, I just wish we all had the courage to confine our defense to three simple words. Kiss my ass. <laughs> if it please your honor, kiss my ass. <laughs> 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 yeah, war would be a great joke. If only so many people didn't die of it. <laughs> Who gives a hang about that? Kiss my Elsie, do you have my notes on the uh, Gehring cross-examination? Yes, Bob. After three months of prosecution evidence, Goering and Jackson were to face each other in court. The success of the entire trial depended on the cross-examination of Goering. If Jackson and his team failed to convince the world of Goering's guilt, there was the serious risk of a revival in support for the Nazis in Germany. Well, at least you'll be playing to a full house. Gilbert had advised attacking Goering on Nazi atrocities. I wish to call defendant Hermann Goering to the witness stand. But instead, Jackson aimed to exploit Goering's vanity, to encourage him to talk about his own importance in the Nazi dictatorship. It was Goering's last chance to defend his place and that of the Nazis in history. By the time his turn came to testify in the trial, he had been weaned from drugs, he had slimmed down, and he was literally strutting. He was bragging. He was the old Goering of old. He was radiating energy. He was radiating contempt for Jackson. You are perhaps aware that you are the only living man who can expound to us the true purposes of the Nazi party and the inner workings of the leadership. I'm perfectly aware of that. Upon coming to power, you immediately abolished parliamentary government in Germany. We found it to be no longer necessary. You did not believe in and did not permit government by consent of the governed. That is not entirely correct. Even a government formed on the Führer principle could maintain itself only if it was based in some way on the confidence of the people. I might remind you that your own President Roosevelt declared 
Certain people in Europe have forsaken democracy because democracy had brought forth men who were too weak to give their people work and bread and to satisfy them. Goering was prepared uh, for his defense and he went on the, the, the offense immediately and he upstaged Justice Jackson. Of Justice Nuremberg. The 300 newspapermen and spectators who heard today's session of the war crimes trial got a pretty good insight into why Hermann Goering stood second only to Hitler in the hierarchy of Nazi Germany. Big, puffy Hermann Goering is certainly nobody's fat so Throughout the questioning, there was an air of. Jackson now tried a different tactic to confront Goering with documented evidence and to prove how he had conspired with Hitler to break international peace treaties. In his speech of the 21st of May, 1935, the Fuhrer declared that the demilitarized zone would be observed. And uh, do you find the uh, next paragraph? Since at present international entanglements must be avoided under all circumstances, all urgently needed preparations must be kept in strictest secrecy. Do you find this? Yes. Well, those preparations were military preparations, were they not? Those were general preparations of mobilization, such as any country makes. But were of a character which had to be kept entirely secret from foreign powers. I do not think I can recall reading beforehand the publication of the mobilization preparations of the United States. <laughs> well, well I, I, I respectfully submit to the tribunal that this witness is not being responsive and has not been in his examination. Could, and, could you please repeat the question, please? It is please. perfectly futile for us to I'm, spend our time I'm if sorry. we cannot have responsive answers to our questions. Excuse me, excuse me. This witness, it seems to me, is adopting and has adopted in the witness box and in the dock an arrogant and contemptuous <laughs> attitude toward the tribunal which is giving him the trial, which he never gave a living soul or dead one either. Perhaps we had better adjourn now at this state. If you all do half as well as I did, you will do all right. The arrogance of Goering in today's session supports what opponents of this trial have always said. If you give these people a chance to speak, they will propagandize and make it a farce. If Goering is permitted to get away with this, he will encourage all the defendants to do the same thing. Perhaps it would be best to cease cross-examination under the circumstances. Oh, he must keep going. To cease now would be interpreted as a victory for Goering's obstructive tactics. Goering is being permitted to preach. If he is allowed to become a hero of the Nazis because he dares talk back to the United States, this wins him admiration from every Nazi in Germany. You know, I almost thought this afternoon it would have been wiser to have shot these men out of hand. The trial really was poised at this stage uh, very dangerously between success and failure because if, if you couldn't cross-examine or if you couldn't risk in, in public court asking these people questions, then the whole trial would appear a complete mockery. It would be pointless to have undertaken it and it would in some sense have been a victory for the defendants. Goering's defence, aimed at stirring up Nazi feelings again, has had some success. A Hollywood-sized fan mail is being addressed to the bulky ex Reichsmarschall, but he's not allowed to get the letters. Most of them are on the lines of, keep your chin up, Herman, or good for you, Herman. Don't say that nobody loves you. 
I know that somebody loves you And if you wonder who it might be I'll tell you nobody loves you like me Cross-examination of Goering now passed to the British. Maxwell Fife's strategy to prove that Goering was lying about his knowledge of the Holocaust and to undermine his credibility as a witness. This document was sent to us by the British Army of the Rhine. It is directed to all administrative levels, down to county level of the Nazi party, and it assumes they knew all about the running of the concentration camps. Are you telling the tribunal that you, who up to 1943 were the second man of the Reich, knew nothing about concentration camps? I did not know anything about what took place and the methods used in the concentration camps. Uh, let me remind you of the evidence that has been given before the court that four million Jews have died in the concentration camps, while an additional two million met death in other ways. Are you telling this tribunal that a minister with your power and the Reich could remain ignorant that that was going on? This I maintain, because all these things were kept secret from me. And might I add that, in my opinion, even the Führer didn't know the extent of what was going on. Uh, I would like you to look at a, an account of a discussion between the Führer and the Hungarian regent from April 1943. Have you got that? Yes. Hitler goes on. If the Jews there did not want to work, they were shot. If they could not work, they had to perish. The Reich Minister of Foreign Affairs, who was there, declared that the Jews should be exterminated or taken to concentration camps. There was no other possibility. And would you look at Exhibit USSR 170, a conference which you had with a number of people. I call your attention to the statement that there are only a few Jews left alive. Tens of thousands have been disposed of. Do you still say in the face of these two documents that neither Hitler nor yourself knew that the Jews were being exterminated? for the correction of this document. Will you please answer my I question? Must... <clears throat> Do you still say neither Hitler nor you knew there was a policy of extermination of the Jews? As far as Hitler is concerned, I have said I do not believe it. As far as I am concerned, I said I do not know, even approximately to what degree this thing took place. You did not know to what degree, but you knew there was a policy aimed at extermination of the Jews. No, no, a policy of emigration not of liquidation of the Jews. I only knew there had been isolated cases of such perpetrations. Thank you. I think the real strong talent in that prosecution was Sir David Maxwell Fife. He uh, had more background, which is really very natural for someone who lived in England to know more about Germany than someone who lived and worked in the United States. And Maxwell Fife did come through. He, he was the one who frustrated Goering. But Goering had not renounced either Nazism or Hitler. You might be interested in this. Until he did, the danger remained that dead or alive, Goering would be a focus for Nazi support. Your wife is worried about you. She's worried about your blind loyalty to the Fuhrer. Ah, well, that's all right. She's a woman. That's what women are for. People will understand that. Wouldn't it be better to face it? The man was a murderer.
I can just about imagine that he ordered the killing of Russians, some Jews, and political enemies. But I do not believe that Hitler deliberately ordered the murder of women and children. Hitler was a psychopath. With Himmler, yes. But Hitler was so charming. He spoke so nobly. Anyway, those numbers, it's just technically impossible. The trial now took an unexpected turn. There was a key Nazi left alive who could testify to the full scale of the Holocaust. The Commandant of Auschwitz, on the run since the end of the war, was finally captured by the British. Recorded in his affidavit, he described how, in his camp alone, more than one million people were murdered. I used Cyclone B dropped into the death chamber from a small opening. It took from three to 15 minutes. We knew when the people were dead because their screaming stopped. After the bodies were removed, our special commandos took off the rings and extracted the gold from the teeth of the corpses. Children of tender years were invariably exterminated since by reason of their youth, they were unable to work. Is that all true and correct, witness? Yes. He was just another German being loyal to his Führer. It's a crime of such enormity that after that evidence, uh, the defendants uh, pretty generally gave up. One by one, Germany's top Nazis took the witness stand. The world waited to see whether they would follow Goering's example and steadfastly defend Hitler and Nazism. The most devilish mass murder known to history it was ordered by Adolf Hitler, a crime which fills every German with shame. Provoking this war was the greatest crime of the greatest madness Hitler has committed. One after the other, the defendants uh, adopted different tactics, they admitted some of their guilt or whatever it was. But what happened, of course, was that Goering, his idea that he would be the leader, the Fuhrer of this small crop of, uh, of criminals right down to the end, evaporated. I quote an affidavit made by the witness. Whereas I have called Hitler an amoral type of person, I can regard Goering only as immoral and criminal, the most egocentric being imaginable. His greed knew no bounds. Did you give that statement? Yes. Look, I wouldn't worry about the Hitler legend anymore. When the German people learn all what's been revealed at this trial, it won't be necessary to condemn him. He has condemned himself.
As the day of sentencing approached, Goering grew more and more nervous and found it harder and harder to laugh. Defendant Hermann Wilhelm Goering, in accordance with the terms of the indictment on which you have been convicted, the International Military Tribunal sentences you to death by hanging. Eleven of the 21 defendants were sentenced to death. Seven were jailed and three acquitted. The Reich Marshal shall not hang. Will you leave me a while? We heard AFN, the Armed Forces Network, radio program. It was coming from outside of the building. I knew the judges all had cars and all had German drivers. And I knew they parked down there. And uh, so I got curious. I was hearing Spike Jones and his recording of De Fuhrer's Face. When De Fuhrer says, we is the master race, we hire, hire. Right in De Fuhrer's face, not to love De Fuhrer. is a great disgrace, so we hire, hire. Right in De Fuhrer's face. And it was the funniest thing on earth. All of these German drivers were laughing up a storm about it. It was over. The, the Fuhrer and Goering and everything they stood for was out of the way. They could live again. When Herr Göring says, he'll never farm this place, we hire, hire, right in Herr Göring's face. With the eventual defeat of Goering in court and his subsequent conviction and his death sentence, I think we can argue that this really was the end of the Third Reich. Goering appealed against his sentence of hanging. He requested instead to be shot, a death more fitting for a soldier. His request was denied by the judges. I want the cell lights left full on tonight, Sergeant. All night. Yes, sir. Carry on, Sergeant.
Hermann Goering died on the 15th of October 1946 by taking an SS suicide ampule. To this day, it is not known for certain how he obtained it. Goering joined Hitler, Himmler, Goebbels and Ley in choosing suicide. He died as he had lived, trying to make a mockery of all human values and to distract attention from his guilt by a dramatic gesture. Goering's body, along with those of the 10 executed Nazis, was taken to a crematorium in Munich, their ashes secretly scattered on a local stream. There was to be no monument to Hermann Goering. 